Hey, what is up guys? Guitar Rock here. Welcome back to another counter side video. Alright, if you guys are not aware, in March, Global is going to be having a bunch of characters and I figured I'll make a top 3 that I think is going to be a priority for a lot of players. Uh, and, you know, going to be able to be the most beneficial to your account overall as an individual player. So let's talk about it. Let's jump into it. Uh, I'm going to give you guys my thoughts as a veteran, a C player. Now, first things first, uh, what's coming in uh, March? If you guys are not aware, I've already made a video talking about the roadmap, right? So feel free to check out on this channel as well. We've already covered the roadmap per se. But as you can see, Global and C is actually not too far off, all right? So there's more units in C for sure. But Global also has some units that come first, notably, for example, Gambler, which uh, came out in Global server about two weeks ahead, or I was it three weeks ahead? And then in C server, some players, most players were surprised that we got this as a counter pass. All right, so I don't know the direction of the game is the uh, very inconsistent, very messy. So I'm not sure what to expect per se. But overall, I think we can still expect based on the banner, these are going to be the characters that we pull. All right, using the blue tickets. So hopefully, help you guys decide properly. Number one, I think this is going to be staple for a lot of players. Dorothy. Now Dorothy is a soldier unit, right? That means she's going to be using a soldier gear and she's a fury type. So fury type meaning that she is going to be able to only solely rely on number of hits. Skill haste gears are very very bad, very weak against, uh, doesn't work on them. So what makes her really really strong is she's one of the best buffer in the game uh, alongside with Shinja. Now Shinja, Seoyun, Dorothy, these are going to be the top 3 staple characters, staple units if you're trying to buff your team overall. So the buff that she provides is going to be equal to what Shinja can do, uh, but you can stack both of them, which is going to be very very uh, cool. Right here as you can see, the second passive skill. So, uh, when deployed, self and all allies attack speed plus 1%, crit damage plus 2% for 8 seconds. So not bad actually, if crit is triggered 5 times, the buff is applied again. So even though this is an 8 seconds buff, but every time you reapply, uh, every time you manage to crit, uh, you know this will, this buff will reapply again and it's very good. It's almost permanent, most of the time she will be able to crit consistently. You can look at her stats, uh, her crit is 47% without any gears. So this is quite good, uh, almost 50% crit right there. So one thing to note, if you bring this up all the way, to level 5, you can see buff duration increased by 2 seconds, so that means 8 plus 2, 10 seconds, and allies attack speed plus 7%. Alright, that's going to be 8% uh, attack speed buff and crit damage plus 2%, which is like not bad. The crit damage is uh, a bit negligible, but 8% attack speed, again, slightly more than Shinja. If you guys are not aware, let me see if I can show you guys uh, Shinja's one. If I'm not mistaken, Shinja has about 7%. I'm trying to trying to remember here. Shinja right here has 7%, yes. So Shinja has 7% uh, increased attack speed, and you can see right here crit stats plus 200 added to the passive buff. So yeah, uh, she Dorothy does have slightly more attack speed. Keep in mind Dorothy, despite being a soldier, uh, she's still able to provide buff to everyone. So she does not only buff soldier team, but yeah, if on PvP you want to use a soldier team, yes, she's going to be strong right there. But for for what she can do overall, she's going to be one of the better buffers. I do highly recommend. Uh, she's going to be very, very good or shine in raids in particular. So raids, uh, especially if you're struggling with Britra or Inhibitor, that's where she's going to be uh, very consistent. Alright, so the reason why I would highly recommend you guys to use your blue tickets on her is because she's good in both raids. Whereas some characters might be good in one, maybe not so good in the other. For example, Sigma. Sigma, uh, it used to be Sigma is good in both Britra and Inhibitor, but they rework and change it to 16 units. So now Sigma is only uh, good in Britra and not so good in Inhibitor. So this girl, Dorothy, is actually, uh, I would place a higher priority compared to Sigma. That's just my humble opinion. Alright, so next we have... Guess who? Carmen. Now, I'm sure you guys have heard of Carmen before. Uh, I've talked about her for multitude of times. Alright, so Carmen is going to be a very, very good character. Solid character overall, competing with Evelyn as the best healer in the game. 
Yes, healer. Now, Carmen doesn't provide any special uh, buff in terms of her, her support, right? She does have this uh, attack speed, but this only applies to herself. You can see she will be able to heal all allies for 2% of their max HP every time she lands a critical hit. Now, one more thing also, you can see right here on this particular uh, special skill, she can heal up to, uh, I think it's mentioned here, 20% of their max HP over one second, and she has the ability to nullify debuff, which is quite rare. And last but not least on her ultimate skill, she can heal for another 40%. So Carmen uh, is going to be the best healer. The best healer, the best supporter. Now, is she better than Yang Harim? No. She's going to be more of a healer rather than someone that gives buffs. She doesn't provide much buffs. She's just there for the heal. One more thing is also her range. is insane. Alright, so she has this ability that... You know, keep in mind she has a sniper range despite being a supporter. So if you are trying to pull for a unit that's going to be beneficial to you for some raids, for example, Britra, she's going to be notable right there. She's going to shine alongside with Awakened Shinja. Uh, both of them will be able to support all the way from the back without uh, getting close to Britra or within Britra's hit range, right? Most other supporters like, for example, Young Harim, Arius, uh, anyone else that is not Carmen or Awakened Shinja, most of them get destroyed. Even Evelyn get destroyed because they move nearer and if they are too near, you kind of get destroyed. So uh, in that case, if you're trying to tackle Britra in the top, top, top uh, 150, you're trying to solo Britra or whatever, uh, she's going to be very, very good there. Alright, so something that you want to consider to be able to help out or buff your Awakened Ju Shiyun. Highly recommend uh, Carmen. So in case you guys are wondering, Carmen is a, uh, a little bit unique. She's counter and CO, as you guys can see right here. Alright, so CO, uh, I think most of the Elysium Philharmonic characters are CO. And she's able to hit air as well, which I think is quite interesting. Now, Dorothy, I still think Dorothy is the priority most of the time. Uh, Carmen should be your second if you have spare blue tickets. Now, what would be the third priority for global players? What should you pull? Uh, some players might opt out to recommend Revenant. I think she's a solid unit. Uh, nothing against her, but she's not as flexible as the other two. Uh, she only fits in soldier teams. If you intend to run soldier teams, or if you ever want to run it in uh, any of the end, you know, end stage, end game stage, for example, right now our end game stage is going to be the higher end dives, or even the challenge stages, right? So perhaps you can do one team, she might shine there to be able to provide the soldier barrier. But I don't think she should be a priority, alright, if you are new. I do highly recommend Scarecrow. Uh, she is going to be a better fit for most players. Now, why Scarecrow? Scarecrow is a ranger. Very unique. She's a mech soldier ranger, right? She's a furry type. Again, same with uh, Dorothy. That means attack speed is going to be much more beneficial to them because how they activate the skills is going to depend on how many hits they have. Now, what makes her really, really good is her ability right here. Uh, she has the range. She can hit the enemy from quite far away. She shines in particular in PvP, but I actually do think in PvE she's not too bad as well. So you can see she has a, an escape skill where she moves backwards when her HP drops to 60% and she switches to attack mode. And you can see uh, this one is going to increase her attack speed for 8 seconds every time she casts a special skill. And enemies hit by this particular skill, you know, will have their melee damage reduced by 20%. Uh, the last one is uh, another passive skill where it increases her range damage by 1.5% for each basic attack, stack up to 20 stacks. So she's quite strong actually. Uh, if you're looking for like a decent ranger for both PvP and PvE, I highly recommend her. Plus she's very easy to use because she's two cost, right? So uh, I think most characters that come out are going to be like four cost, three cost, uh, quite high cost. But uh, characters like 2 cost is quite rare. So Scarecrow, hopefully, uh, you know, she'll be able to give your team some flavor. I do highly recommend her uh, so far based on my testing in PvE. I think she's one of the higher damage dealers out there. If you have good soldier gears on her, keep in mind besides, uh, despite her being mech and soldier. Uh, wait, I just want to make sure. Do you equip her with soldier gears or do you equip her with mech gears? Because I am... Confuse. You equip her. Oh, you equip her with mech gears. Okay, my bad. Uh, you need good mech gears, which is why which is 
explains it because I don't have that good of a mech gear. I have a lot of good soldier gear. So she's a mech and soldier. Very confusing. But yeah, mine is still level 100. Uh, if you can 110 her, you know, that is going to be... Uh, she's going to shine in PvP and a lot of stages as well. Now, in terms of priority, highly recommend you guys to try uh, get... Like the top three is going to be Dorothy. Uh, she's going to be the main one, followed by Carmen, second one, and Scarecrow should be your third priority. If you have spare tickets, I will highly, highly recommend her. Now, of course, there's a few other characters right here that I didn't really, in particular, go through. And not because they suck, all right? None of the characters are like super bad. I think most of them do have their niche usage but it's just uh most of the characters i don't really mention is because they are not as flexible for example revenant fits really well in soldier team lulu is a good uh debuff uh what do they call that buff remover but you don't really need her per se a uh, biblet uh i don't even know where she fits right she's not super meta and a few others maybe uh warden is going to be a very strong sniper but i think that's going to be way later i don't think it's coming in march but coming in april later so yeah uh for now, pay attention to these three units. Hopefully, this is going to be able to help you guys, global players, to decide for these characters to pull for, to look forward to. As always, subscribe if you guys haven't already. Give this video a like. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a nice day. Goodbye.